So Darrow Downing, of course, the president of Western Kentucky University, your uncle Joe Downing, the famous artist. So that's quite a legacy to have to live up to. It's uh, it's interesting, yes. Yeah. And I have you know siblings who are educators. Almost everyone in my family before me was an educator. I know, and you you're not a formal educator, right? I'm very fortunate that this that Tom Savers has given me the opportunity to I teach community ed classes about Alzheimer's and dementia care. This time savers back up. So what that is, that's the business, that is your passion. Right. It is a business that you started with a friend when the two of you saw a real need for caregiving. Yes. You know? And I mean down to the minutiae of somebody needs groceries yes. but they can't get them. Yes. So back up and give me the genesis of how that came to be. Uh, so Paula Dermody is someone who grew up here but doesn't live here anymore, but her mother had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And I was interested in the concierge piece of things. And we just kind of partnered to build something that we would want for our own families. Caregiving is such a, I mean, we could talk for hours. It's the hardest job. It is, isn't it? And you told me something a little bit earlier that surprised me about caregivers, how if they don't take care of themselves, they often become victims before the people that they're yes. caring for? Yes, they will, they will be hospitalized or pass away before the person they're caring for, statistically, very often. I mean, I won't quote any statistics because it's kind of scary. But yes, because they're, they don't go to their own doctor's appointments. They don't get their medications refilled. Uh, they don't eat well. They don't get enough sleep because their main focus, their primary focus, is providing care for someone they love. Wow, that's huge. So caregivers really need to step back and take care of themselves. So what advice do you give to people who are caregivers? Uh, we talk to families very often about this because you can tell, we facilitate a support group once a month as well, and you can tell they're exhausted and they're overwhelmed. And so they'll have friends who say, I want to help. You know, I don't know how to help. Um, and if you're one of those friends who, who you, you know someone, know. you do, but you don't want to intrude, right, exactly. you don't want to be invasive, but you want them to know that you're there, There's right? There's a very fine line. So I tell people, you know, don't have too much pride to go to them with something concrete and say, would you mind coming on Wednesday from noon to four and let me go get a mani-pedi? Would you mind staying all day on Saturday so I can go to my niece's wedding? You know, yes. some things like that that, get, that give you that little break, that that's all it needs for you to breathe, rejuvenate, and then go back into the fray. Elizabeth Downing runs Time Savers and is, of course, a Downing. And we're coming to you on coffee near me from Spencer's Coffee House in downtown Bowling Green. And, you know, you can keep the conversation going. We ask you, who would you like to have a cup of coffee with? Sit down, have coffee, or you can have tea, whatever. But uh, I'm going to ask you that question. Okay. So living or dead, who would it be? Uh, I've been reading this book about Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill, and they are both, you know, so interesting. Amazing, yes. But I think it would be Churchill probably because he was such a character and so just his use of language. I was just going to say, and the way he talked, yes, love it. Yes. Elizabeth, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Thanks. Thank